Today we're going on an adventure with a wildlife photographer, the guy who really knows how to use this thing. Let's get outside. Today we're on the Cherry Blossom Trail here in Botetourt County, and I'll be going with an expert wildlife photographer named Garland Kitts. This is his camera, and Garland sees things that the average person just doesn't see. He's going to share some of his techniques with us, and we're going to see some of the amazing pictures that he's taken over the years. We're going to head down to a spot where we can pretty much view all the lake. Garland Kitts has a knack for capturing wildlife through the lens of his camera. After retiring four years ago, he's been able to devote several hours a day to the quest. And he's looking for pictures with a little something extra. A win is a, a shot that's in focus that is a little bit on the unique side. Not just a flat looking at a bird or an animal or anything else. It's something like a bird has a worm in its mouth or it's, it's uh, hanging upside down on a tree. We joined him at Greenfield Park in Botetourt County, where the small lake nestled against the mountains attracts lots of wildlife. He's hoping to photograph a small, somewhat uncommon duck called a teal. I understand there's uh, probably a couple of blue-winged teals out here, so hopefully we'll be able to see those. That'd be cool. On the way to his preferred spot, he suddenly stops. He heard something. So what are we looking for right here? We're looking for a yellow warbler to come flying back over. And you heard it first? Mm -hmm. Heard it first. An app on his phone listens and confirms it is a yellow warbler. Right. Kitts places a Bluetooth speaker on a branch and plays back the bird song. How important is patience? I think it's pretty important. And a couple minutes later, the bird homes in on the speaker. Here he is. And Kitts has captured the image of a beautiful yellow bird most people never would have noticed. This has got kind of like a spotting scope ability on it. He's just back from California, where he captured images of peregrine falcons, which can dive at 180 miles an hour when seeking prey. When I first got there, the first thing I saw was the male peregrine setting maybe 15 yards from me on a limb on the side of the cliff. I mean, it's a perfect shot. But then came the shots with that little bit extra. And the male went out, he caught a pigeon, prepared it for the, uh, for the female. Pulled the feathers. Pulled the feathers off of it. And then he launched, or, you know, launched off of the uh, cliff wall there and flew in a circle around in front of where the cave is, where the nest is. So the male's carrying the pigeon. Right. And then what happens? The female comes under him, still flying, and in mid-flight he hands her out of his beak into her talons and she flies back into the cave to feed to the youngsters. And you got that all? I got it all, yeah. It's very cool. And at that point you said to yourself what? I'll never have this happen again. What a dream this is to get this photo. There have been many other amazing shots. Water dripping from the beak of a loon, a pair of beavers, a bird in flight, a mink along the Roanoke River a den of foxes. So I uh, went over and uh, kind of did the hiding thing in the weeds. Sure enough, one of the youngsters popped his head out. Got some pretty good shots of him. Then there's this eagle scratching. So I took several shots and he started doing all kinds of funny things, moving around, I realized he was wet. Then he started scratching his head. He, he, it's very cool to watch, almost comical in some ways. We walked on hoping to find those small ducks, but again, Bird song interrupts. So we just heard an indigo bunting, and he's going to see if we can find it, call it in, take a picture of it. Once again, the song on the speaker. Once again, the reward, a bird I never would have seen. Always looking for something I haven't seen before. Beauty of birding is you never know. Kitts keeps a list of all the birds he's photographed. His life list includes more than 300 species. They might be floating in that area where the blue heron was. We scan the entire lake and walk a couple of miles looking for those small teal. But this day, 
they're camera shy. And if we don't get the shot, that happens. After several hours, we pack up and are almost back to the car when Kitts hears something else. In the trees above us, a Baltimore Oreo. After a few chirps on that speaker, the bird comes into view and Kitts records another gorgeous shot. You can't expect to spend 30 minutes a day looking for stuff and have it come to you and have a lot of photos. You just can't do it. For Kitts, the Oreo is not one of those elusive birds he's never seen. It's not even a bird doing something particularly special. But it's a beautiful photo, and again, a bird I never would have noticed had I not been with someone who sees what the rest of us don't, who captures pictures, captures moments, so at least we know they are there.